morning, Missoula. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's supposed to introduce us to the show this morning? Uh, I usually go Fridays, right? So uh, let's go with Noel. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Noel McFoy. And I am Josh Minnie. And I'm Scott Ramp. And we have a great show for you today. We've got a lot of guests. We've got um, Cecil B. Crawford here and Kyle Foxton, right? Mm-hmm. From um, from Native American Heritage Week. Yep. And they're going to talk Fox, about their Fox Daniels. Fox Daniels. I apologize. Yep. <laughs> um, and they're going to talk about their experiences in the schools. And then we also have Hugh Bickley here talking about his new play Holocene that is at the palace. We've got events. We got city council. We got mags. So yeah, it should be a good show for you guys. Up first, we've got weather, Facebook. Oh yeah, all um, sorts of stuff. Awesome so if we program. check out our um, iCam, so there's our little. 15 frames per second outdoor eye camera, which you take a look outside on Spruce and Higgins. Yeah, it's not too bad. And you can control this camera by going onto website, MCAT.org. You can. And here's the weather. Currently, it is 53 degrees outside. It's supposed to be so hot today. Yeah. Like the hottest. It's supposed to peak today. It's going to be 91 degrees. And then it'll start cooling off tonight. And then later on this week, it'll start cooling off. And then rains by this weekend. So it's homecoming week. Yeah. And this sure. Saturday is the homecoming parade. Mm-hmm. So you can expect... Showers. Rain. Showers and <laughs> Yep. Expect showers and 60 degrees, which that'll be kind of nice. I mean, if it doesn't rain, like, all day. Yeah, it's been yeah. changing from um, 40 to 60% back and forth, so yeah. it probably will rain, but I don't think it will rain too much. It says showers. They said it was going to rain yesterday, and yeah. as far as I know, it didn't rain. Yeah, no. it's true. <laughs> so, we'll see. It's all up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. So, Literally. <laughs> if you want to find more information about our show or anything else involving MCAT, you can log on to our website at MCAT.org, where we have all sorts of great stuff. You can go to our Facebook page right here, and you can like us on Twitter, which exa- looks exactly like our Facebook page. See? You can't even tell. Wow. That's wow. amazing. Yep. And, you know, I want to get things going, so I want to... Um, <laughs> get going, Scott. Come on, so I'm going to talk about some of the going. new program that we have on tonight. So tonight we have... Um, since it's Wednesday, it's going to be another part of the Celtic Festival. So we filmed the Celtic Festival, and this whole month we've been shooting, we've been showing pieces of that Celtic Festival for you guys to enjoy. And tonight is another um, episode of Celtic Fest, and it's at 5 p.m. every Wednesday. Check for it next Wednesday. It might be on next Wednesday. It might not be. I haven't checked that far ahead, but tonight for sure there's going to be a Celtic Fest. So um, th- here's I'm going to show you a little clip of Celtic Fest followed by a little click of some Missoula County Democrats talking about fair land use and uh-oh. what uh oh indeed <laughs> <laughs> all right so um here you go check it out flows down and we use that for irrigation, we use that for our drinking water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is the lifeblood of what we do. And that starts on our public lands. So um, I think we probably, I don't know if there's anybody in here that disagrees that public lands are important. I doubt it. Okay. Um, one other, a couple other things I'll say is, I'm gonna, and these are probably stats you guys know, is that like 35% of the, of the land in Montana is public. So that means 65 is, is private. Cool. Those little girls were adorable. Mm-hmm. Doing those yes. cute little Irish dancing. Aww. And before we bring on our, ne- our first guest, I'm going to show an arts video made by our very own um, Rick Phillips. So he went to the Zach and he filmed a little taste of what you can expect cool. from the art. So here's this, and right after this, we'll bring out um, Cecil B. Crawford and Kyle. Kyle Fox Daniels talking about Native American Heritage yeah. Week. So stay tuned.
Hey, we're back and we're here with Cecil B. Crawford and Kyle Fox Daniels. Yes. They're talking about Native American Heritage Week. Mm -hmm. So, guys, tell us your story. Yeah. Okay, my name is Cecil B. Crawford. I'm 5'8 Blackfeet, 3'8 Starving Artist. My Indian <laughs> name is Uma Katayu Nitsiti. That means big cat with stripes in the forest or tiger woods. Cool. Very nice. nice. That's awesome. uh, my, my, my title is I'm a Native American specialist. My job is to help students graduate. Awesome. That's really awesome. Graduation is so important. And so you guys actually have a really big graduation rate, right? Yes, we do. We lead yeah. the state. We have led the state Missoula County Public Schools for the past three years. We have the lowest dropout rate. And as a Native American for the rest of Montana, their graduation rate at 65 in Missoula is 82.1. That's awesome. That's so cool. awesome. And how do you, what kind of programs do you put in place to get Native Americans to graduate? Uh, I wrote a few things down here. Um, and it's just not us. It's the yeah. cooks, the bus drivers, the teachers, the mm -hmm. principals. Um, well, graduation and education is so important. Like, it's great that you really, like, you got to start early and you need, like, friends, you know? Yes. You don't and, need and, just, and, like, teachers. And, and one, of, one of the things we do is that at the beginning of the year, we just had a welcome back barbecue awesome. at Bonner. Awesome. We have monthly round dances. We have a winter corner. What? Washington Middle School, we have a Native Youth Powwow in the spring. We have a Missoula Native Youth Council, University of Montana. Honor our graduation seniors with a dinner. And last year we had 44 out of 45 seniors graduate. Yay! Awesome. And we have Sunday Fun Day where I teach beating, art, and golf. At oh my God. Nice. And that'll start this week. We have drumming and singing sessions at Paxson, uh, or uh, CS Porter for six weeks. We have open gym at CS Porter in the winter. We have FAFSA night where we help our seniors with scholarships, applications. We have ABLE, American Indian Business Leader. Before it used to be at each school, now they combined it. And um, before they combined it, once we went to Arizona, or Minnesota, and there were three trophies to be won. Um, for the business chapter, the, um, the chapter, and starting a, a new chapter. And Big Sky won the business portion, Hellgate won the chapter portion, and Willard got the trophy for starting a new chapter. Awesome. Right. So out of the three trophies to be won, Missoula County Public Schools won all three. Nice. And this is competing against everybody in the United States, wow. all the other chapters. Wow. So they are national champs. But this isn't the first time they won it. They won it last year. Um, Where's their fire truck ride? Yeah. You know? Yeah. They win state champs, they get a fire truck parade, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's theirs? These are these are national champs. That's awesome. We have a Title Seven Parent Advisory Committee. I'm on the uh, graduation matters committee. Uh, there's clubs starting in each school, so at lunch. Uh, Hellgate we meet at on Thursdays. Uh, trips to colleges, home visits, so like a it's not just when the student is in trouble, mm -hmm. it's, 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 we, we visit them all yeah. the time, you know. Yeah, like I said, you need some friends, like, right. just like teachers, you need mm -hmm. someone to come to your house and we make you go. We do presentation <laughs> to classes, yeah. uh, some of the resources we have, um, Native American specialists in the schools, um, Missoula County Public Schools resources also include social workers, family resource, Missoula Indian Center, the University of Montana American Indian Science, Title Seven Parent Advisory Committee, all of Missoula. Awesome. Wow. Everybody in Missoula. That's so wonderful. You guys have a lot of activities to keep everyone out of trouble. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Apostle, our superintendent, gives us a lot of support. That's great. 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 So you've been um, standing there pretty quiet, so now I'm going to start picking on you, Kyle. Go ahead. Um, so Tell us your um, transition. Like you're from Great Falls, yeah, then you moved here during for high school, right? Um, I actually moved here for my second grade year. Well, actually, it started out for my first. On uh, now my senior, so about 12 years I've been living here. Cool. Um, when I very first started to go to high school, I realized that it's a lot big, <clears throat> a lot bigger high school or a lot bigger school than normal schools. And when I was going into high school, I uh, actually got a lot more anxiety than I 
wouldn't have imagined or any at all. Yeah, sometimes so, high school could definitely be overwhelming for oh, a lot yeah. of different people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's also about building relationships is what helped me uh, succeed in becoming what I am now. You know, I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else, but like, yeah. I got I got that much more of an edge. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, what what were you like before like you your transition? Um, truthfully, I was a quiet kid. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. Back in elementary days, I was kind of a bully, but then, uh, you know, I kind of got in trouble a few times and realized that's not that's not what life is about. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I tried to started to uh, decide what I wanted to do with my life, and I had all these big dreams. You know, I want to be a fire truckman or nice, you know. And then yeah. eventually, I got down the road, and I'm like, you know, that doesn't really sound like me. I'm kind of bored of that thought now because you know I've been stuck on it for some time. But then, as I went on through high school, I started to make uh, new friends. You know, different people. And they introduced me into like businesses. Um, there's actually this business, uh, American Indian Business Leaders. It's actually a program, or more, more they call it the chapter, mm -hmm. American Indian Business Leaders Chapter. And last year we went down to Arizona and we took what was it, first place? First place in the chapter presentation. Cool. Wow. That's yeah. Awesome. So against yeah, right. everybody in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Good job, so. you guys. So yeah. um, we're talking about Native American Heritage Week, and uh, what? How long has this been going on for? I think it was in 73 that it, um, it was a law passed in November would be Native American Heritage Month. So, um, what is, uh, okay, uh, the question I'm trying to ask is like, um, what's the importance of having this week and educating local schools in town? Well, it, it, that's just it. It educates everybody, but also it um, gives our students pride. Yeah. yeah. They don't get to see that. Um, and one good example is when we have the powwow, um, it's the youth powwow. When those students are out there dancing, you know, their regalia, they're, they're different than when they're in school. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have pride. And when the teachers come there and see that, it, it's amazing, the trend. But it, there's just so much pride. And they don't get that all the time. Yeah, right? and that's you know? what they need. Yeah, that's wonderful. A lot of people don't understand. And, um, when they come from the res, they go through a culture shock. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Come, it's a whole different way of life there. Mm -hmm. You come here, um, back there, we're not a minority. No. We come here, we're a minority for the first time. There might be other Indians in the school, but they're different tribes. Yeah. Even if they're the same tribe, they have different interests. Yeah, and even like what Kyle was saying, it was just a, a shock to him when he went to high school. So it's like, not only is the culture shock, but it's also yeah, a major shock going shock. on, a social shock. <laughs> yeah, I have a girl uh, just moved here. She's from Hart Butte. There yeah. were 40 students wow. at Hart Butte. There are probably 40 teachers there. Yeah. There's 1,200, 1,300 students there. Wow. She was just, she was just shaking. Aw. <laughs> totally, yeah. So wait, tell us what you do at the schools, though. Because I know that you go to school every day, right? Yep, every day in the morning I shake hands out in front of Willard. And, and the students really like that. Yeah. Imagine if they did that at each school. That'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they, uh, it, like, well, I'm not there this morning, they'll ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, you, are you all right? Yeah. Right. You, know, you just have to tell them you're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I go in and I talk to the counselor principal, the secretary, the custodian, yeah. and, and, and I see who's having problems, and then I contact them. I might have to call their parents. I might just I might just talk to them. They might just need a pencil. I teach them to advocate for themselves. Yeah, you have you carry a backpack around, yes, right? Do. What do you have in your backpack? Um, all the school supplies, all their records, all their grades, their attendance. Um, I just love the computer. I could type in yeah. there. <laughs> It tells me who you know who's missing, and, and mm -hmm. if they're not there, I'll call. Yeah, and, good, um, nice. You know, I'll find them, and I've warned them. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you're not here, you get a call. But yeah. you're doing it with like love and compassion. You know, you're not doing it because like you need to go there and you need to do this. You're doing it because like you want them to survive and like be successful. That's wonderful. You're a valuable resource. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah um, that's wonderful. When Kyle was a freshman, I had to chase him around. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I was going through a lot of anxiety because it was a big school. It was my freshman year. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of things on my plate. What was it, what was I going to do with all this homework that I was going to get? You know, and then eventually I just get to the point where I'd walk out the front doors and you know Cecil would be like, "Hey, where are you going?" And I was like, "Oh, I was going to take take off to go home." Cecil would be like, "No, you, come on, let's go to class now." 
<laughs> yeah. Something like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That's awesome. But That's now, awesome. Kyle's our uh, student representative on our parent advisory committee, our Title VII committee. Awesome. Um, he's also the student rep for uh, the school board. He represents Willard. Cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, awesome. before we go, do you have anything else you'd like to add about um, Native American Heritage Week? Well, I just think it should be celebrated all the time. I mean, I think so too. It was a Indian education for all was a law passed in 1972. It is just now coming into play. I was a sophomore in high school when it was passed. I'm 58 years old now. It's just now coming into the schools. Yeah. It should be there all the time. It's supposed to be in each class, mm -hmm. even the math, every class, and it could be. Mm -hmm. mm. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. It, it's, yes. it's great. Um, we're going to have another guest come on the show. It's um, Hugh, Hugh Bickley. Hugh yeah, Bickley. His playhouse scene. Yeah. Well, thank great. you guys for joining us. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great so treat. Much, you guys. Thank you. This is wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so, much. so take care. We'll, we'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom <gasps> of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? <laughs> When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. <laughs> we are now back with some audio, and we're here with Hugh Bickley, and he's talking about his um, show yeah. at the palace. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. currently going on, and it'll go on for a little while. So, this is your <laughs> is this your first play that you wrote? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's my first uh, foray into playwriting. I've been in theater for a while, though. Yeah. I've uh, I've been an actor here in Missoula. Um, productions such as The Elephant Man at the University, uh, a couple of national tours with the Montana Repertory Theater. Uh, the first one was Biloxi Blues by Neil Simon, and then uh, The Miracle Worker this last spring. So, cool. yeah, I've been kicking around the theater scene for a while, and this is my first uh, attempt at playwriting. So, yeah? And yeah. so what is, what's Halloween about? Well, it's about a lot of things. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about family, mm -hmm. but uh, the setting is sort of a science fiction one. It's uh, set a couple hundred years after an apocalypse. Um, sort of the world's last university, uh, last professor mm -hmm. um, trying to maintain the literacy rate in an infertile populace. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of facing his dying days and dealing with the anxiety of being forgotten. It's sort of a unique midlife crisis, a post-apocalyptic midlife crisis yeah. that this guy's going through. And uh, he ends up going to some disturbed lengths to try to leave his mark on the world. Um, so it's just about the, the struggle that his family goes through, um, following him around, and yeah. That's awesome. How did you come up with this idea? <coughs> well, in the summer of 2012, uh, me and a bunch of my actor friends got together on my friend Nick Pavlich's front porch, and we decided we wanted to do some theater. We, we thought if we're sitting around for the summer, there's no point being unproductive and uncreative, so we wanted to put something on and they elected me writer-director and so I, I wrote this scene um, where these characters were using water as currency and, and we were in the front porch of this house that was really run down um, and it just kind of took off from there so these characters kind of came to life and, and, and we all worked together to come up with the next scene and then the scene after that, and then I just kind of took off running, and I started. Bring, I brought in a whole first act, cool. and eventually we came up with this three-hour opus play <laughs> yeah. that we showed as a staged reading to to Missouri, and it was just too long. Um, but it, but it, it was a great success, and so the last two years after putting on the stage reading have been focusing it, uh, making it a simpler package and under two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and this is a um, science fiction, is it a drama, comedy? It's both. Yeah. Nice. I, I think it's funny, um, but but it, it I, yeah, I'd, I'd have to call it a drama. Nice. Yeah. Cool. 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 And so, so, what experiences from um, 
your experiences at theater um, help propel you to write this and direct this? Uh, everything from, you know, being behind the scenes um, in in a couple of national tours, uh, as well as acting, kind of multitasking in that capacity. Um, I'm uh, responsible for the set design and construction alongside my peer, Hannah Appel, who played Helen Keller in The Miracle Worker. So her and I spent a month building the set for this production in my backyard um, <laughs> out of... Out of Materials we found at the Home Resource Center and nice. in yeah. alleys lying around and stuff. So it, it's it's been an ensemble effort all around. But uh, I'd have to you know attribute my well-rounded experience at the university for yeah. for all the impetus to yes. write this ultimately. So cool. Yeah. So but, this is your yeah. first play that you wrote. Yeah. Okay. So. He his very first play is playing right now yeah. at the it Palace is. every night, pretty much yeah, Sunday us, through Friday. Yeah, tell us your dates and times. Well, it's playing this Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, the house opens at 6.15. The play starts promptly at 7. You'll be out of there by 9.15. Um, it has a 15 intermission. The bar's open. Uh, <laughs> and then next week it runs Sunday through Friday at 7 p.m. Same situation. house opens at 6.15. Cool. Um, and then we're done. Awesome. And it'll be over. Wow. That's so Forever. exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how are you feeling about it? Great. I'm, I'm really, really proud of the work that the that the actors are doing, uh, the, of, of the work that my director's done. They've, they've really accomplished something that my script alone could never accomplish. So it's I think it's exciting. And it's moved me. And, and you'd think I'd be sick of the story by now, but no. they brought it to life in a way that... And so your vision awesome. is complete. Yeah. It's executed how you wanted it. Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. That, and that's just like the top. Has it yes. taken off in any form like more than what you had expected? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, it's, it's gathered a lot of momentum. I mean, on a local level, obviously, but, um, over the years I've, I've been contacted by, uh, people in LA that are interested, um, uh, people in, in, in Minnesota that, and, um, uh, my good friend Kate Morris just moved to Chicago, and she's a huge champion of the script overall. She's a fellow playwright of mine, and of course Josh Wagner at Viscosity yeah. Theater. Yeah, it's Josh had, Wagner. Yeah, yeah he 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 was crazy enough to pick it up and and help produce it alongside Great. with Viscosity. Yeah. So I, on a local love. level, certainly it's it's yeah. been it's been a success so far, and I think the next step is really just putting it in the mail and trying to make. Send it off. Yeah, send it yeah. off. Cool. But it's always nice because it's yeah. your own. It's your own show. Mm -hmm. You can you br you can pull it out anytime you want in the future. Like say like 10, 15 years from now, and just like yeah. I got something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote this play one time. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you've got a website, right? I know that viscosity.com, the mm -hmm. Viscosity Theater website, has got their your Kickstarter campaign yep. video on there. Well, the Kickstarter campaign is actually closed. But oh, the, is it? But okay. The, we, we went well above our mark. Good. I think we shot too low. Um, but, we, yeah, the, the video, though, is still very informative yeah. as to the play overall. Mm -hmm. So that'll mm -hmm. be helpful. Um, awesome. As well as holocene.eventbrite.com. And Eventbrite is E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E. -E. Cool. Yes, so. you can check it out. Great. Check everything out on there. <laughs> yeah. Also, is there anything else before we let you go? Come see us. Yep. Let it speak for itself. I know. I'm going to go on Sunday. Sweet. For sure. Yeah, awesome. I plan on going on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to drag them with me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're coming with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. You know, and we'll talk all about it on Monday. Yeah. yeah. You're like, ah. <laughs> you like Eber and Roper. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swear you silence after you leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if you want to check out their show, it's called Holocene. Ho Holocene. Holocene. H-O-L-O-C-E-N-E. -E. And just for a little context, it's everything after the Pleistocene. The Pleistocene was the Ice Age. So the Holocene is the period of time in which we live right now. Oh, interesting. Awesome. Yeah. That is cool. That's really cool. Well, we'll be right back after this. Yeah. Thank you. Here's your bear spray, babe. I don't need it. I can outrun them. Look, I ran track in high school. No, you can't. You're not supposed to run from bears. And you did the shot put. Okay. I'll spray you down. What? No, don't spray it! Whoa, oh, oh. Hey. My face! My face is burning! My face is burning now! Oh. When hunting in bear country, understand, it puts you at risk. Be smart. Be safe. Be bear aware. All right. Hey, we're, we're back. back. That was, those are great. That was great. Um, 
I I think that Indian um, Ameri- like Native American Heritage Week is yes. so wonderful, and like yeah. they we really need to like do Heritage Week for them more. Like it should be every day. It yeah. shouldn't just be like a designated week. Like we kind of like moved onto their land and like <laughs> took everything from them and like kind of like Pretty displaced much them. So. Genocidal. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know. Okay. So, like, it is. It's okay, important. the views expressed on this program oh, yeah. don't reflect Charter Communications, Missoula Community Missoula, Access Television, or the City of Missoula. Or the City yeah. of Missoula. And speaking of which, we're going to be saying all sorts of stuff about City Council. Go ahead. Yes, so all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so cool, cool. Well, um, City Council was a full one. It was an hour long program. So what? yeah, it was. Uh, there was talked about. There's two public hearings. Um, one was. Uh, on a resolution for adjusting uh, excavation permit fees for light utilities. So basically, um, it's going to be quite a day. <laughs> quite a day. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just making up words. I just say stuff. Sure. Permit fee for. So is this um, light utilities like street lights? It's like street lights, gas, power, um, and most importantly, broadband fiber optics. Oh yeah, oh, okay. the broadband okay, talk. Cool. Yeah, so this is a, this is about the broadband talk. So we're talking about the broadband. Um, and uh, wait, hold on a sec. Hey, Asaf, what's the first thing you, that comes to mind when you think of broadband? Gosh, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> a band of broads. <laughs> yeah. So what's going yeah. on with this broadband? So what's going on is that they're um, basically it takes less to bore through the ground than to trench. So in terms of excavation, when you're digging up for sewers or more heavier utilities, it takes a lot more manpower, it takes a lot more traffic control, Mm -hmm. and it takes a lot more planning. Whereas if you're putting in light utilities, such as gas, uh, actual lighting, and of course, what we're talking about, fiber optics, Mm -hmm. it it takes a lot less traffic control, it takes less planning because of the boring process. So, and not boring as in uh, yeah, I get it. snoozing. Yeah. It's but boring like, as in boring a hole boring with a machine. With yes. oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, Smart. how do you do trenching? Trenching is when you dig a trench in the ground. Okay, okay. So, yeah. And the boring is just like holes. Right? It's like a machine that bores through the hole. It's like oh, really advanced technology. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, what are those called? The, there's like, they go in the pipes. They clean the pipes. Yeah. Rotor rooter. Rotor rooter. Or like a. Never mind. I'm thinking of a. It's like the rotor rooter of broadband. Yeah. Okay, cool. Or like a. Never mind. I was going to say <laughs> in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, remember how uh, the bad guys had that machine that would bore through the ground? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like so that. It's kind of like that. It totes makes sense now. Yeah. Everything makes sense with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so <laughs> before we um, get off track, we let's <laughs> what, what let's we talk about, about what's actually going on here. So awesome. Denise Alexander from Development Services, she's going to talk about the resolution for adjusting the fees. So let's listen to Denise Alexander. Denise Alexander, Development Services. Uh, Mr. Haynes was unexpectedly called out of town, so he has asked me to give you this presentation uh, for this item tonight. So. During discussion about improving broadband service in Missoula, the question about affordability and appropriateness of the current fees was raised. The fees for installation of this type of utility are charged the same fee charged for installing what we call heavier utilities such as sanitary sewer, storm sewer, and water mains. It was concluded that excavation fees for light utility mains should have a lower fee because the mains are more often installed through boring rather than trenching, which requires less application review, traffic control, and inspections, reducing staff time and costs. City engineering uh, staff, uh, inspection and permitting staff, assessed the cost of the city's services and figured out the level of fees needed to cover those costs. They also reviewed the proposed fees against the Wolford Cost of Services study and compared the proposed fees against the excavation fees charged in billings. This is a portion of the resolution 7883 that was adopted in June, this June, 
for new fees that will be effective in January 2015. This shows, it's kind of small, but I think you can see it, this shows the amended portions of the utility main construction fees where the heavy utility, utility sewer, water, and storm drain fees will remain the same. That's on, uh, at the top. And there is a new category now in this um, proposal for the light utilities, gas, electric, fiber, optic, telephone, and cable with the reduced fees. The base fee for these will be $300 for the first 300 lineal feet. And, de and depending on which method of installation is used, um, the cost for additional linear feet will be $1 per linear foot over 300 feet for trenching or 50 cents per linear, lineal foot over 300 feet for boring because, again, the boring uh, does take a lot less uh, work. Some of the, the things that don't need to, that are, are not as difficult to do as traffic management when they're boring because they don't, they don't have a big trench that they have to be sure that people don't get. This is a reduction of 78% from the current fees, a significant reduction, and if adopted, it is hoped that the lower cost to service providers will be passed on to consumers. Based on the number and type of utility excavation permits issued in fiscal year 13 and 14, we estimate that this will reduce revenues to the general fund from between $90,000 to about $20,000 per year. All right, so basically Denise just keeps talking. Yeah, about yeah, it, that, but, <laughs> that was a pretty long-winded quote there. Yeah, yeah. But, the, but she made a lot of good valid points, and I guess we're moving from joint trenching to joint um, boring. Yeah. yeah. That's Pretty the much. idea. Like when we're putting in fiber optics, we'll be the thing that really caught my eye is when she said that we're going from ninety thousand dollars from the general fund to twenty thousand from the general fund. That's a huge leap, which is great. Yeah, that we is can light our cities. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like she. Well, it like actually she's like doing her research too, and is like thinking smart about the math and the funds. So good. Cool. You could consider it that way, but uh, it's actually the the city's going to be losing money. Oh no! Okay. Because it's costing less because oh. uh, the city gets money for actually putting in the trenching so oh. and so basically that's going to be money that's taken away from our budget so um, there's more comments that I could bring up but since we're running low on time I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to a soundbite from Mike O'Haran and he is going to talk about how this uh, could be good in some way mm -hmm. um, in that it will draw in more businesses so let's listen to Mike O'Haran. Thank you. I'll support the motion, not because I think any savings will be passed along to customers, because I highly doubt it, but to sensibly take away real or perceived barriers to those doing business in Missoula, and to make sure especially we remove barriers to having low-cost, high-speed broadband services in Missoula. Thank you. So, yeah, so this will, uh, the, the lighter cost on light utilities mm -hmm. will reduce barriers for broadband companies who are trying to come in and lay down optic fiber. Good. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that'll be positive. I mean, we are doing like a the growth inward policy. Yeah. So that really adds to it. And we just need it. the technology. We just need the faster Wi-Fi or we faster do. internet for everybody. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to jump back to Ed Childers again, who makes a comment about the budget. So let's listen to Ed. So I voted to increase expenditures by a million dollars to buy uh, fire equipment that was sorely needed. And we authorize that on to come. As Mer Charney would have said, we don't have a guaranteed funding source for that. And I can't, in, in good faith, vote to reduce revenues when I know we're already short. So I'll, I mean, this could have been done as part of the budget, and then I would have been happy to support it. It wasn't. I'm not. Okay, so Ed Childers is not happy yeah. about uh -oh. this because it is reducing uh, yeah, budget. revenue. Yeah, yeah. totally. So. And I didn't know that that was like that, that we um, got or didn't get money for like a, however much that we installed. I didn't know that. That's interesting. It's just that, yeah, and it's it's the work that, it's the, the, the cost of the work. So, so who do we the get fees. the money from? So, like, we charge people to, the city charges companies and uh, 
utilities to dig the trenches or board the holes. Okay. So it's okay. our, it's our, we're making revenue off of digging these trenches and boring these holes. Okay. But now that it, the fees are less, <coughs> yeah. we'll be making less revenue. Okay. All right. That's interesting. That's so hard because, you know, we're like digging into the earth. Yeah. But also like we need, I don't know. Okay. And, right, but so on one hand, it's going to, you know, drive more companies to come in here and do business because yeah. the fees will be less. But on the other hand, the city will be losing revenue, which that money needs to go towards such things as fire engines or police cars or whatever. Yeah. New evidence here. Just, no, I <coughs> yeah. Forget uh, it. That's yeah. Let's move on. Difficult. I'm glad I don't run a city. Tell us what you think by um, commenting on our Facebook page, or you can put it on um, tweet us. Yeah, hot tweet. tweet us. Hot, hot tweets. Sweet, sweet tweets. Sweet oh, tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sweet tweets. All right, so jumping to the next topic. Um, it's all about parking, people. So oh. it's Ooh. the inclusion of the 300 block of Daly Avenue in the UM Residential On Street Parking Permit Regulation Program. So, oh, okay. Yes. okay. More parking for the university? No, more parking for uh, the really? residents who live in that district. Uh, I'm sure they're so mad <laughs> that they're yeah, highly annoyed. Basically, they can't park. I mean, it, what it seems like from the public comments is that it's just a total mess. Um, yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to park on their street. And, you know. With an ever expanding populace at the university, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, mm -hmm. that's what they're trying to, that's what they're talking about. So I'm going to let Jordan Hess explain what this is. Sure. So um, my understanding is that um, a um, group of residents uh, approached um, Ms. Bentley and Mr. Taft um, and uh, initiated a petition process to include the 300 block of Daly Avenue in the um, University of Montana residential on-street parking permit program. Um, there were uh, a number of, this has been to, uh, to the Public Works Committee a couple of times uh, uh, with some questions of process. And ultimately, um, the proposal is to add, um, as shown in the uh, document attachment, um, Exhibit A, I guess, map, um, is to add um, essentially the, entire, the entirety of the 300 block of daily to the, um, to the, pro, um, to the district. Um, and that's the factual information as I see it, and, and I don't really have a whole lot more to... Okay, to so that's Jordan Hess talking about basically okay. what exactly is going on here. Um, yeah. And um, Emily Bentley um, also gives some more facts, and she wants to send it back to committee. So let's listen to Emily Bentley. Background. Uh, sure. So I, I support my constituents' uh, request to be included in the parking district because I agree with the Montana Supreme Court that they should be able to park near their homes. Uh, however, I've, after talking with them, um, I agree, also agree with uh, the other side that the issue needs to be looked at on a more comprehensive manner. And so um, I'm going to send this back to committee. And I'm glad that this particular request seems to have finally brought this issue, which has been boiling for some time, to a head. And I did hear about significantly when I was on doors um, during my campaign. During the 2012 ADU discussion, many issues that are facing the university neighborhood came to light. And as a response to these concerns, the city, ASUM, and the University of Montana signed a quality of life agreement which identified student housing working with the state legislature to have local authority over rental properties, uh, expanding the quality of life program, and looking at parking buses um, and the park and ride. And specifically, it said to seek proposals for long-term planning process to address future housing and transportation needs for the university and the city. And this includes engaging in an extensive public process to establish a plan to address those needs in an effective manner. And so uh, this agreement was a major part of the compromise that established our current ADU law. And I hope that counselors who supported that ordinance would support efforts to ensure the city follows through on its promise to the neighborhood. As we adopt more policies that focus our growth inward, we need to include a strategy that effectively manages urban parking. This current request from the 300 block of Daly um, should be a catalyst for the council and the parking commission to finally tackle this problem. After all, uh, the city ordinance 3523, uh, which establishes the district, clearly says that it will be reviewed by both the parking commission and the city council in order to consider the effectiveness of it. 
So over the past month, since it's been brought up, I've heard really, really good ideas from the university neighborhoods who do understand the complexity of the problem. Um, I think we should work with the Parking Commission to put together a process that examines the effectiveness of these ideas in a meaningful way. I don't think we need to pit Hellgate or the university students against residents. And so I hope that in committee you'll support me in seeking a more comprehensive solution. I am totally willing to take this on, um, but I need your support and I need the Parking Commission's support. And in the absence of that support, I will have no choice but to stand by my constituents who, per this ordinance, are entitled to the process. So with all this in mind, um, and because I can see where this vote is headed, I'm going to send this motion uh, back to committee for reexamination. Okay, so Emily Bentley wants to send it back to committee. I'm going to jump ahead a few sound bites um, and give a sound bite from Wayne Griffith, who's a um, uh, Wayne Griffet, who's the city of Missoula traffic, who's a part of City of Missoula Traffic Services, and he's going to talk about how this problem shouldn't be done in a piecemeal fashion. So yeah, let's listen. it definitely needs to be. Because, you know, yeah. it's like university students, Hellgate students. Like she said, you don't want to pit them all against each other. No. It just wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, Wayne Gravatt, City Missoula Traffic Services. Uh, I, I, I guess the one, one approach that, that, I, that, that, I, that I really want to emphasize is that a piecemeal approach to this thing, it just doesn't work. We, we've done that, and, and we basically just pushed the problem around. Uh, we don't solve anything. We just kind of move it to another area because there's certainly parking issues, uh, no question about it, but doing it by a piecemeal approach is, is just, it, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. Uh, it, it has been in the past, it will continue to be one. Um, I think the best approach to the thing is that the agreement is an old agreement. The, the agreement needs to be kind of uh, reworked with, with, with all constituents represented. Certainly, the, the, uni the university needs to have a say in the matter. The fraternities, the sororities, Hellgate High School, and certainly the residents that live in the area. I think the old agreement has kind of outlived itself, and, and a, a new way needs to, to come up. There has to be a better solution rather than move it by a block-by-block -block basis, because it, it certainly doesn't work for traffic services. I think Ann uh, Guest would agree that there, it's, it's very difficult for the Parking Commission it's just not a good approach, and I, I would really encourage us to look at it on a broader base and come up with a solution that works for everyone. Thank you. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, so a broader, a broader approach that works for everyone. That definitely makes sense. Um, we're going to hear from a resident who lives on da the block of da 300 block of Daly Avenue, and let's listen to what their experience is like. I'm Dan Bowling. I live 2316 West Foothills Drive. Yeah. Um, I'm an employee at the university, and I park... Or actually, he's an employee of the university. Let me go back. But and then he parks here, so let's talk about that. In that residential parking, well, outside of the residential parking district every day, I have to say it's not my favorite way. I'd rather park on campus, but it's parking there doesn't work either. And as we all know, it's a very big problem that requires a complex solution, something that requires a lot of thought. And um, I'd have to agree with the gentleman before me in that a piecemeal solution simply doesn't work. There's a domino effect that happens. As you see, even if they close an area for street cleaning, um, people move five, six, seven blocks out of the way in order to still park someplace. The, the demand isn't going to go down just because we change it. So I, I hope we work towards some comprehensive solution. Um, and I'd also hope that we find some solution where people like myself, I live in the South Hills, and I have uh, an incredibly dense uh, area where there's a lot of people who live, and I have trouble parking on my own street, for instance. So I wonder how I can have an equal protection from the city from parking problems as people who live in the university district. And I don't see that there's too much of a difference aside from their problems for parking happen during the workday and mine happen at night um, where I'm actually trying to park more commonly. Um, so I'd encourage when this goes back to committee to seek an, a lot of public comment and come with many different options. Thank you. Okay, so many different offerings, nice. options come with many different ideas because parking is not only a problem at 300 block of Daly Avenue, it's also a problem elsewhere, like in yeah. the South Hills. And then there's also a soundbite from Robert Hamilton, who actually is a resident of 300 block of Daly Avenue, and he gives a long-winded uh, comment about his experience uh, parking and basically says that it's impossible and that whenever he has to have someone like an electrician work at his house, he has to swap out the car, 
and with the electrician and the electrician has to stay there that whole day and then he also talks about how um he has his neighbors parking in his front yard so they can have enough parking spots oh so, really yeah wow. yeah so i'm going to jump ahead because we're we're coming close on to the hour the end of the hour yeah, we uh, are. and um basically uh it got moved back to the to discuss in the committee for further discussion so that's good i think a lot of the solution has to do with like uh, improving uh, the parking structures mm. like what they can do instead of like build more parking outwards you know like you know tear down <laughs> place things to build more parking or whatnot you know they can always extend the parking in um i think the the fields behind the university because yeah. there's that you know like grassy trench yeah that could be parking. additional parking yeah. you can probably add like uh, those trees are in the way though so you know they're, they're i think they've extended as much as they can do but like the parking structure at the university is only three floors, right? Three floors. Yeah. yeah. You can increase it by maybe like two floors. They could. That could definitely increase. Or, or people or. could take the bus. Yes. And Starting uh, here's January fifth, it'll be free. Yeah, and here's a quote about the new bus that's being sent around. It's an electric bus. So let's listen to Jordan Hess's experience with this new bus. Mr. Hess. I had the pleasure of riding on, a, on an all-electric uh, battery-operated um, bus today, and I know that members of the council received invitations to, to do the same tomorrow, and I'd encourage you to do so. Um, this bus is, um, has no tailpipe emissions because it has no tailpipe. And, um, and one of the things that I think is really fantastic is that um, this uh, vehicle um, actually has a lower total cost of ownership. So the, the upfront uh, capital cost of buying a battery electric bus is uh, significantly more expensive than a traditional diesel bus, but over the life of the bus, the, um, the, the fuel, the electricity in this case, um, and maintenance um, expenses are significantly less than, than those of a diesel vehicle. Um, so it stands, uh, it stands to reason that our uh, local transit agency could save an awful lot of money um, while improving our local air quality and um, having vehicles that are nearly silent. Um, actually, some of these vehicles have to have artificial noisemakers put on them because they're so quiet that people don't hear them coming. Um, so you're all invited tomorrow at 11.15 um, at a.m. at the transfer center to, to take a demo ride, and I hope to see you there. Wow, electric bus, that sounds really cool. And by how? he meant tomorrow, which was yesterday at 11. Um, how yeah. long does it take it to charge? I how have long, no idea. I yeah. how long the charge is. Well, I'm not an expert on electric buses. If you think about electric cars, the, you know, there's a good appeal for electric cars because it doesn't produce emissions, but the source of where it charges produces a, emissions. Yeah. That's right. So in a lot of ways, it's actually been proven that uh, the source of a lot of this, the charging produces just as much emission as the car itself. You mean in like some cases coal. more. It yeah. takes coal to make electricity, so yeah. to give the bus electricity... There's got to burn a lot of coal. So you're hurting Unless they energy. change that coal, it, they switch it to renewable well, energy, yes. which is... The bus would have to, like, go to our only wind turbine in town and I have to plug in for, like, 12 hours. Yeah. Well, there's solar panels. There's wind farms out in East Montana. There could Central be more Montana wind farms. Too. There could be more solar panels. It would produce more jobs in Montana, and it would create an energy that would be totally renewable and not finite, like coal. Yeah. Right, and also... Um, <laughs> We're, we're cloudy seven, eight months out of the year. <laughs> well, but not central Montana or eastern Montana at they all. They are pretty bad a lot of times. During the winter, like, a mm -hmm. lot of times they don't really see much sun at all. I mean, not Great Falls. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could I argue about the there. weather all day. The but... windy city. Yeah, like, the, it's so windy that the wind just, They're, like, They have turbines, which is great. They're smart. There they should be more turbines. turbines everywhere. You know, there's a reason why there's no... There's not more turbines, and that's because the fossil fuel energies are actually... Isn't it bureaucracy? It's bureaucracy, yeah. Okay, let's leave and it who, at that. Who owns the politicians? This oh, isn't, okay, that's just bureaucracy. This is an opinion of mine. This is, a, this is the truth. I mean, we live in a plutocracy, but... Yeah. Uh, yep. At any rate... Yeah. So people, I have some events still. Yeah, yeah. Let's, um, let's, we have to get to <laughs> have, Let's jump have, to events. We yeah. have seven minutes left in the yeah, show. And got, so um, I'll be only... I'm just going to talk about well, one We had thing. a lot going on. Yes. We had two guests... Um, Mags, and we had this, you know, we and had... It. Long so, events. There, I mean, a lot of events, always, as always. So all right, go ahead, Noel. Yeah, since um, I'm just going to talk about Wednesday events, since I only have, like, seven minutes. Um, but if you want to find out anything that's going on Thursday or anything that's going on with these events that I talk about, go to missoulaevents.net, 
and it'll tell you everything. So today, Bitter Gymnastics has a play, preschool play group at 11 a.m. It's for ages walking to five years old. It's uh, in it for an hour. It's $8 to drop in or $12 for siblings. Um, yeah. So they set up fun stations, activities throughout the gym. Parents and children choose the activities that interest them the most, including obstacle courses, foam pit, trampoline, sw trampoline swinging, sliding, climbing, and playing on an inflatable. On an inflatable. It just period right there. Um, and so every time you come, it's a new fitness adventure. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of fun. Uh, at the Mansfield Center, there's a brown bag lecture at the university. It's called the China-India Border Dispute. What's at stake? Uh, China and India have been shared a long uh, conflicted border issues. And um, so they went to war to dissolve these to over these borders in 1962, but they failed to dissolve the dispute. So they're still fighting about it. And so... They're going to talk about China's expanding commercial naval interests in the oh, Indian yeah. Ocean, and they're I aggravating Indian fears and like, just like they're afraid of war. They're afraid of war. Yeah. In both of those countries are nuclear powered. So yeah. They have, oh, they are major. They have big bombs. They yes. are major. So, you know, countries. Yeah. yeah. So and they have the highest population in the world. It's China and yeah, India yeah. have the highest populations in the world. So yeah. it's like billions versus billions of people. It's. Yeah. Scary bigger stuff. Bigger war than anything we've ever seen. If it happens, which would probably won't happen because it's not going to happen. I mean, we're... Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's like the... They are... Yes, they're worried, but not, like, intense, like, fighting. Like, yeah. we have plenty of other countries. I think it's, on. like, Indian palace. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Okay, I've got five minutes, boys. <laughs> There's a Peace Corps application workshop, Tips for Success, uh, is at the University of Montana starting at noon. You can attend this workshop to learn how to recruit or accesses applications to match them to available assignments and how to strengthen your application. Uh, you'll have your questions answered, you'll learn steps to take on campus and in your community, improve your chances, and you'll gain valuable tips to guide you through the application process. So I um, actually cool. just had a friend that went to the Peace Corps last week. She went to um, West Africa. Yeah, for scary. two years. Yeah. That's a scary place now. It is really Ebola. scary. Yeah, so I hope that she she's okay. Um, the Missoula Public Library has got middle school writers today at 4. Uh, it's every Wednesday from 4 to 5. And it's just for ages, it's for grades 6 to 9. And you just go and you get feedback or you just write stories or you share your stories and you hang out and eat some chocolate and, yeah, play some games. It's just a good place to go after school if you are bored and want to write or hang out. Um, at Missoula Early Head Start, there's a circle of security parenting class. I talked about this last week. It's... Um, has it's a class for new parents that have questions or are kind of scared and don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, they teach you how to strengthen the parent-child relationship and other uh, offer effective ways to respond to your child's needs and behaviors. Mm -hmm. uh, all the sessions are free. Child care is provided. Uh, to pre-register, contact Erica at 543-3550. Uh, it's a six-session course. So Wednesday and Thursday is from September 10th to the 25th. So it's ongoing, but I'm sure that they'll have it again. I'm sure they will. Uh, every Wednesday is Community Unite at the Northside Kettle House Tap Room. This is where they uh, 50 cents from each beer sold goes to a nonprofit around town. Sweet. It's from five to eight, and the nonprofit is Mont Perg. Nice. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There is a class at Montac on how to profit with mobile advertising. It starts at five thirty, and it's just teaching you um, from experienced professionals. You'll learn how effective mobile advertising is. Hmm. And yeah, and so learn how to do that and how your business can flourish with it. At the Zootown Arts Community Center, there's Bob Ross Night, which is goes on every month. It's at 6 p.m. You can bring your Bob Ross, Bob Ross wigs, impressions, and appreciation for their monthly Bob Ross Night. So they're going to drink wine. They're going to follow along to a video. And um, all, all the materials, supplies, canvas, everything is provided in the fee, which is uh, $20 for members or $25 for non-members. And then there is Mystery Mark by Josh Wagner and Theo Ellsworth. They are playing that at the Shakespeare and Company today at 7. Uh, Mystery Mark, which we have, we've talked to Josh before, and um, it's his play about... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a cartoon exorcism of Clay Cyril, a paranoid and anxious man who's being stalked by his childhood television hero. Yeah, so it'll be cool. Um, I think the play was a really big hit. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it was on MCAT, the whole yeah, play. It was, mm -hmm. yeah. And it'll replay sometime soon. Yeah. So look for it. It's called Mystery Mark. Yeah. 
Um, and then my last event for tonight is Indigenous Cinema at the Roxy Theater, the Cherokee Word for Water. So it's at 7 p.m. Uh, this is screening as part of the monthly Indigenous Cinema series. Uh, it's a feature-length motion picture inspired by the true story for the struggle for opposition to an ultimate success of a rural Cherokee community bring running water to their families by using the traditional concept of gadu... gadu I'm going to butcher this. Um, Garuji, which is working together to solve a problem. I apologize that that didn't come out as well. Yeah, so it's based on a true story by the of the Bell Waterline Project. Movies about a community coming together to improve its life condition. So that's what's going on for Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry that was cut so short, but go to MissoulaEvents.net. And um, you'll find out everything that you need to know. Yeah, and for city council and other city council Thanks, stuff, Scott. You, know, you can go on to the city of missoula website just you do the search engine mm -hmm. city of missoula it's like yeah city missoula.ci.us and you can't miss it yeah and um uh, for more information about us you can log on to our website at um mcat.org you can like us on facebook you can follow us on twitter and yeah but for wake up missoula i'm scott ramp i'm noel mcboy and i'm josh Minnie. thanks for joining us